Today, Precarious plays Deus Ex, Human Revolution. I don't want to read the whole thing, but there's a copy of uh, the speech that I think we only caught the end of in the cutscene. Yeah. There's an excerpt that I do want to read. So, Hugh Darrow is talking about his accomplishments, and then he takes a, a bit of a right turn. I saw us living as gods in a realm without illness, suffering, or death. A realm in which every individual is able to become the man that biology, society, circumstance, or fate has tried so desperately to keep him from becoming. Uh, I myself hope to be one of those men. Now, I do take umbrage with uh, man and men, but it does. he does immediately go on to speak, uh, to include himself, mm -hmm. so it makes a little more sense in that context. Um, I mean, he's in... Richard, the lockdown's disengaged. I'm heading back to the hangar to see if those blast doors are open. Have you been able to raise anyone? I'm picking up several glimmers, but there's too much interference. I... I think you're... on your own, Jensen. Careful there, Francis. You almost sound like you regret that. Hmm. Um, I appreciate the sentiment, though. Yeah. Overall. That's sort of like... I feel like that... That's the ideal of, of science and of technology. Yeah. Is to... Improve the... Ooh, mm -hmm. Improve the condition... Of um, as many individuals as possible. Yeah. That. That is probably the most just ideal of science and technology. Yeah, you remember when we were beginning this playthrough and we were talking about finding all of the ways the Icarus myth is referenced and played out. Mm -hmm. That was definitely a nice bow to wrap things up with. So that's what we're fighting against now for the last part of the game. Oh, excellent. I love unpredictable foes that thrash about and leave stains like that. Love it. So exciting. It's okay, though, because Jensen well, is mostly oil now, so... <laughs> I was... I was thinking that this game would be improved if it were also Firefly. <laughs> you know, yeah. <sighs> oh. How do you, how do you? What? How do you get through there? Uh, the way I just did. <laughs> Okay. Oh, gosh, I, thought that, I thought that stack of pallets was a very scary person. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm here on the elevator to prove you wrong. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> Hello, welcome to Kick in the Pants Industries. We are here to kick you in the pants. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, that's actually... Well, you know what? That's... You're a little early. Um, my... My kick in the pants was scheduled for four. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, Just more palette monsters. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's rude. <sighs> palette monsters. Like uh, all of the starters from Gen 1. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> did you get it? Yeah, I did. Okay. From the palette town. Yeah. Got there. I got together. there. Oh man. So So Rimworld. Rimworld it has an interesting element that I, I was thinking about. So there are a few different ways that you can you can achieve this. There are different technological levels that you can achieve this at, but it is possible to augment um characters. Um sometimes against their will. Mm-hmm. 
Well, actually, no. Usually, um, it's odd. It's an odd scenario because it is very much like a god game, like a god style of game. Mm -hmm. Not maybe in the truest sense of the word, like you can't terraform as part of normal play, really. Mm-hmm. Dang. Uh, let me try back upstairs first. Maybe one of these windows is broken and I can hop across. Or maybe I can break one of these windows. Maybe. So, whether it be a simple peg lag, which someone desperately needs because they just got a, a lag shot off by an enemy, by like a, a raider with mm -hmm. a sniper rifle, mm -hmm. which has happened to me before. Yeah. Um, well, that's actually probably the most memorable story from the first time I, I played RimWorld is I had a, a character whose name I no longer remember because I have screenshots. Yeah. But so they, they've been immortalized on my hard drive. <laughs> um, <laughs> So she was vital to my colony. She was my best shooter and my most critical constructor. Like mm -hmm. she was the best with guns and also the best with um, hammer and nails, right? Mm -hmm. She was... I was having all of my characters do a tactical retreat so I could draw raiders further into town because I noticed that one of them had a big ass rifle and I, I saw its stats and it's like, oh, okay, so it gets worse if you're close to a target. And that was far and away, everybody else just had like sticks, right? Mm -hmm. It was like six people, five of them had sticks and one of them had a high grade military sniper rifle. Ugh. Yeah. Someone did not get the notes on how to on, on the the level of party dress, right? <laughs> so, as everyone was running, as she was rounding the corner to safety, the sniper fired and just blew her leg off at the knee. Uh. And because of the the dwarf fortress style combat log, I knew that like exactly what had happened and and how it how it happened, right? Yeah. Um, and it created an interesting gameplay scenario because I used a peg leg in the short term, but it created a, a an important goal for me, which was finding a bionic replacement. Yeah. And eventually I did. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short. Uh, in fact, eventually... So that, that, that actually segues nicely into what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. I think that in my headcanon, in like the little story and the narrative that I was writing as I was playing, that was a very Adam Jensen style experience. She yeah. did not ask for any of that, including the fact that I don't imagine, like by the time she was conscious, because injuries can can take your characters out yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. By the time she was conscious, conscious and had already healed up enough to be aware of what was happening, like mechanically, statistically. Yeah. Uh, by the time her consciousness score was at a an acceptable level, uh, obviously the leg was already gone. Yeah. That happened very abruptly, but the peg leg had already been installed, and there wasn't. There, there's not, there's not an option to try to like put the severed leg on ice and try to reconnect the nerves. You yeah, know? that is not something that the game does. Uh, just keeps getting crowded around here. But that, that one feels pretty clear cut to me. I don't feel like any sort of guilt over that because those people were, were attacking us and their whole group was stranded on this little rim world. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I, I did a pretty good bit of guardianship 
mm -hmm. that scenario, you mm -hmm. know? Um, like, I don't think I made, like, a tactical mistake that put her in that scenario necessarily, because I feel like at the start of it, I think that... Well, I, I don't think that I could have done anything differently that would have made that scenario go any better. Not with the, the level of experience that I had with the game. Now, now I screen all enemies as they enter the map. Yeah. You know? So I guess I could have done that better in hindsight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could have screened the enemies. But uh, this, is the, this is the scenario that taught me to do that. So... Then things get a lot more dicey whenever uh, later on, whenever I had an a, an additional bionic leg. Yeah. I. The hell. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just gonna leave that there. Actually, I signed her up for an optional surgery to have the other leg replaced. Hmm. And that was very unnecessary, right? Yeah. And the character... So the reason why I felt comfortable doing it, um, there is an option. There is a, a, a scenario in which characters are their technophobes. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, you can yeah. have characters that are tagged as being like body purists. And they get negative mood penalties if they have even like a peg leg, right? They would yeah. rather not have that limb than have a, a replacement. Yeah. Um, so I felt comfortable doing that. But as the sort of like <sighs> omnipresent, like under not underlying connected consciousness of all of these colonists, you know, because like you, you're not any one of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, but you're not really like God either because you can't, you don't have like lightning bolt powers unless you turn on the developer console. Yeah. And then you're God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is, it's sort of interesting to consider, um, all of the different lines that you can see drawn in RimWorld when it comes to that. Because just to wrap up really quickly, if you want to, you can sign people up for wildly inappropriate surgeries. <laughs> like, I'm just going to remove your heart. Oh, no. Yeah, just, just heart needs to come out of the bar. <laughs> I need it for somebody else. No. Oh, yeah. 